All right, how's everybody doing? Today's topic, one of the absolute best deals in classic glass, period. The Konica Hexanon 50mm f1.7. These lenses are not expensive, they are not hard to find, and they are optically absolutely fantastic. Um, these things are legendary. Um, let me just run down the basics and um, for you right here. So, the Konica Hexanon 50mm f1.7 was introduced in 1973 alongside the Autoreflex T3. It replaced the 52mm f1.8, seen here mounted in a, in a historically correct fashion on an Autoreflex T2. Um, and with the introduction of the T3, we got a new lens, and that was this one, the 51.7. Um, it was revised and downsized in 1976 with the introduction of the TC. Uh, and at some point in the early 1980s, it was discontinued. All versions feature six elements in five groups, six aperture blades, just like every other Hexanon SLR lens, and a 55 millimeter filter thread, just like most, if not all, Hexanon SLR lenses. The close focusing was 45 centimeters for the original version, 55 centimeters for the revised version. Uh, the length was 45 millimeters for the original version, 40 millimeters revised. Weight 240 grams original, 210 revised. This right here is uh, an original, well, what I'm calling the original version, although technically there were two first versions, or, or two pre downsized versions differentiated only by this marking here. AE, uh, the, the green AE marking stands for automatic exposure. You put the, you, you, you put your, uh, in here to release it from automatic exposure, you push this button right here. So now I can set aperture manually. If I want to set aperture automatically on a, um, on um, a Konica camera, then I set it to AE, standing for auto, which stands for automatic exposure. The very first version of this lens, uh, the AE was marked EE, because back then, Internal light meters what were, were referred to as an electric eye. So it said EE instead of AE for automatic exposure. Um, a nifty piece of photographic history for you. Um, the lens, it's this particular example is nice and smooth. Um, and it's, I don't know, what kind of a focus throw is that? That is a, I don't know, from here to here is, it's a pretty, more than 180 degrees, so it's a pretty fairly lengthy focus throw. Um, it's very well damped, not loose in the slightest, at least not this version. Um, the aperture settings are from 1.7 to 16. It does feature intermediate click stops. Um, at least, well, this version features intermediate click stops. Uh, that is half stops. Um, so, 8, halfway, 5, 6, halfway, 4, halfway, 2, 8, halfway, ooh, and then F. I got, hold on, two eight, one click, two clicks, then one seven. Okay, so that means we got one seven, and then, hold on a second, we got one seven, a click. Those are, so the, the, these click stops are a little stiff. One seven, I got a click for F2, is that right? 2.8, click, 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 yeah. So I got one seven. And it's almost impossible to do the half, that half click. So I'm going to do from, from 2.8, half click, then, okay, so that's F2. So I've got 2.8, a half click between 2.8 and F2, and then finally that click over to 1.7. Um, the half clicks were eliminated with the downsized version. Uh, the, the revised and downsized version does not have half clicks, um, although they're, they're a little stiff on this lens. Still nice to have though. I, I, do, I, do, I do like having the half clicks. You know, it's, it's not a deal killer when shopping for classic glass, but it's, it's, just, it's a nice thing to have. Um, this lens was discontinued at some point in the early 1980s and replaced by uh, a 50 millimeter f1.8 of inferior quality. And again, it's not a bad lens, but there's no reason to own a 50 millimeter f1.8. The, the small downsized 51.8 Konig uh, Axanon, I can't think of a single reason to own it. I really can't. Because these things are so inexpensive and so easy to find. Why would you bother? 
Why? What is, what is the, the replacement offer that this one doesn't? Um, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, the Konica aficionados will often refer to this lens as one of the sharpest lenses ever made by anyone, period. Um, it's a bold claim, but it's one that I've heard made for years and years and years. Uh, that is, that's not something new. That's, that's, not a, uh, that's not a piece of internet lore and legend. You used to read that in the old photography magazines all the time. Uh, this, this, this lens is just, uh, it, it has a, a strong fan base, or had maybe at one time, um, which, which um, truly, truly believed that this was one of the most optically superior 50 millimeter lenses ever made by any one period. Um, and they're absolutely dirt cheap. If you're shooting Konica film cameras, there's no reason not to own one. And if you're shooting mirrorless, uh, this is one of several good reasons to consider investing in a Konica Hexanon system. Um, it's, it's not one of the, it, it's not one of the biggest systems of the manual focus era, but it's, they have some nice lenses. Hexanons are some nice lenses. And, um, You'll be the only kid on the block with a hexagon collection, probably, most likely. Um, I shot this side by side with this um, Nikkor 51.8 um, long nose at a, at a, um, a workshop, from a modeling workshop that, that I went to, um, I don't know, within the past year. And, um, you know, in terms of sharpness, they're certainly comparable. Uh, I would say that the, the, there is, at wide ap open apertures, there is a, a nuance of difference between the bokeh and the rendering characteristics of the Hexanon versus the Nikkor. Um, I can't put my finger on it, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but I think that this just has a bit of a lighter touch um, or more gentle um, uh, appearance at, at very wide apertures um, doing close-up work, and, um, and, I, and I really like it. I, I, li I like the rendering characteristics and the look and feel of this lens. Again, no knock against the, uh, against the Nikkor. They're just, it's just a different personality, a different character. Um, but um, I, I, I noticed a slight difference. I don't I mean, I mean, take a look at my images. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, but, um, but I certainly did. So um, get you one of these. You will not be disappointed. It's a, uh, it's a fine lens. And um, um, in terms of sharpness and contrast, it, it just can't be beaten. It really can't. Um, that's about all one can say for it. I, it really can. I, I will link to my Flickr album of images that I've shot with this lens down below. You do not need a Flickr account to view Flickr images, so um, anyone can click on the link and see the images and uh, take a look, see for yourself, and uh, see if you like the, the rendering characteristics, and uh, you might want to pick one up. I certainly recommend it. Hope you found this video uh, informative or amusing or some combination thereof. If so, Please do like and subscribe and check out the links down below. Thanks now. Bye-bye.